At some point when you're writing music, you will reach a stage where you run out of ideas. You've created a nice tune, but you think, I need to develop this somehow or other, but I just don't know what to do next. What would be the best thing to do? I've no ideas. Well, Sibelius can help you with that. You can see here, I've created a straightforward 8-bar melody, and I'm going to ask Sibelius to expand on it for me. Now, that involves inputting notes, it involves creating new notes for it, so that's going to be in the Note Input tab. So I'll go to there, and over here I can see the Transformations group. And immediately you'll start to recognise some of these words from music classes, music theory. We've, we've all enjoyed the joys of retrograde and inversions. So let's show you how Sibelius works with it. I'm going to take my tune. I'm going to select from there to there. First things first, I suppose the easier ones, are the double the length values and half the values of the notes. Let's try for the double. And the way it works is, as it tells you there, it makes a copy of the tune with every note twice as long as it was and puts it into a new score. So you're not going to worry about disrupting your current piece of music. You also have the option of copying just the notes or everything. I'm going to leave it as just the notes just now. Click OK. There's my new score with my PC with my new notes in it. It's given me the time signature of 4-2 rather than 4-4, so I'm just going to change that. Go to time signatures, click 4-4, put it there. So you can see how that actually looks in comparison to the previous one. It's exactly the same, only everything's twice as long. But with this, I can now do other things. Let me again select the notes. Let's look at the retrograde. Now, retrograde turns the music backwards, basically. But you can see here, there's a wee drop down, and that gives me various options. I can retrograde just the pitches while leaving the rhythms exactly as they are. Or the rhythms and leave the pitches as they are, or I can do both. If I do both, for example, there we go. You can see how that has turned the music back to front, basically. The inversion, with this still selected, I could look at the invert option. And what this will do, inversion of course, turns the music upside down. It will rotate it around a given point. And I can determine what that point will be, what note is going to rotate the notes around. Doing it around the note C maybe isn't the best option, bearing in mind the key that we're, that we're working in. But just to demonstrate, I'm going to rotate it around G sharp. And I'm going to rotate in G sharp in octave 4. Octave 4 is the octave beginning with middle C. And I'm going to rotate diatonically. I'm going to invert it diatonically. The difference there between diatonically and chromatically is diatonically will stay within the key signature. Chromatically would maintain the intervals but that would very often take it outside the key signature. So I'm going to do it diatonically. And the reason I'm doing it around G sharp is I'm going to ask you to keep your eye on these G's here, these G sharps here, because they should stay exactly where they are. There you go. And everything else now rotates around about those. If I control Z that for a second, I'm going to try that again. I'm going to do some more inventive things. Let's try and invert it around E. An octave four, so it's going to, that note's going to stay the same this time. But let's do it chromatically. See what happens. Ooh, much more interesting options there. Now the whole thing goes a bit low, so I might want to take it up an octave. It's still a retrograde inversion, and you can see how you can take one tune and within a couple of clicks of the mouse, make it a completely different melody. The other options in here under the more are fairly self-explanatory. There are lots of them to choose from. I'm not going to go through them all just now, but you can see 
what the, the sort of things that you can do. If you hover your mouse over one of these, a wee tooltip appears showing you what is going to happen when you run those plugins. I call them plugins because in previous versions of Sibelius these were in the plugins menu, but they proved so popular that when Sibelius 7 was introduced, Sibelius decided to put these actually as part of the program on the main ribbon. Now of course what I could now do is select all of this, copy it, go back to my original tune, which is this one here, and paste it either into a new instrument, like so, or I could paste it later in the, clarin in the violin part. So you can see with Sibelius that you should never be left looking at a blank sheet of paper bereft of ideas because you can always go to the Note Input tab, use the Transformations group over here to take what you've already done and just change it and give you some new ideas.